Hey everyone, Michael here. So I'm going to be going over the leak code question, longest continuous increasing subsequence. So the statement is given an unsorted array of integers, find the length of the longest continuous increasing subsequence. So for example, if we had the integer array 1, 3, 5, 4, and 7, we should output 3. And that is because the longest continuous increasing subsequence for this specific example is 1, 3, and 5 and that has a length of three. Um, and it's important to note that they're looking for the longest continuous increasing subsequence. So by continuous, that means that the answer for each index, it should only be one greater than the other. So for example, one, three, five, and then seven, that is a subsequence of this integer array. However, that cannot be the answer because there is a 4 in between this 5 and 7 that does not allow 1, 3, 5, and 7 to be the answer since 4 is actually less than 5. It's pretty much making a gap within this subsequence. So 1, 3, 5 has, is, is the longest uh, subsequence, at least that's continuous. Um, so I'll jump into an example on this whiteboard. So if I have the integer 1, 3, 5, 4, and 7, a good way to actually solve this problem is to use two variables, one called maximum and one called current. And essentially what we're going to do, what, what algorithm we're going to write is we're going to keep track of a running maximum. And at each step, as we're iterating through our integer array, we're going to be keeping track of these two variables. So upon initialization, maximum and current are both going to be initialized at 1. And that is because, by default, there is always going to be at least a, a, size, a maximum size of 1. So we're going to be starting our iteration at index 1. So our maximum is 1 right now, because at index 0, we have just this right here and our current right now is 1. So if we look at 3 all we're going to be doing is comparing the current position to our previous position. So in this case our current position we're at 3 and our previous position was 1. So now our current should change to 2 because 3 is greater, greater than 1. And then at each iteration, we're also going to be keeping track of that maximum. So our current is greater than our maximum currently. So now we can reset our maximum to our current. So now max changes to 2. And then we move forward in the iteration. So now we're looking at 5. And just like the previous step, we compare 5 and 3. 5 is greater than 3. So our current changes to 3 and then our maximum will change to 3 as well because our current is greater than our maximum currently. So this changes to 3 as well. And then we move forward in the process. Now we're looking at the number 4. Uh, however, in this case, 4 is less than 5. So we're actually going to be resetting this current to 1. And that is because we're, we're looking at this as an entirely new subsequence now, because it has to be continuously, uh, continuously increasing. Um, our maximum, however, will stay the same, because 3 is greater than 1. Our maximum is currently greater than our current. And then we move forward to 7. And once again, we compare 7 to 4. 7 is greater than 4, so this current increases by 1, and this changes to 2. Uh, but our maximum is still greater than our current, and we've reached the end of the array, so our answer is whatever max is, and that is 3. So that is the algorithm. All we need is two integer variables. Uh, it's a pretty simple algorithm to follow. Uh, once I write down the code, I'm sure it'll make more sense. 
So the first thing we want to do is we want to sanitize our input, you know, make sure that if we are given a null array or a size of zero that we handle that. So we can say if nums equals null or nums.length equals zero, then just return zero. Now the next step is we actually need to create those integer variables maximum and current or cur. And we initialize them at one because our maximum is one by default. And then we iterate over our integer array. And remember, we have to start at index one, not index zero. And that is because we're comparing the current number that we're at to the previous value. And so now we need to be updating current at each step. So I'm going to write this out and I'll explain it after. So nums i is greater than nums of i minus 1. So what this is doing is we're updating current at every iteration inside of our nums array. So if our current number is greater than our previous number, then all we're doing is updating current to be whatever it current is at the moment plus one. However, if this is not satisfied, if our previous number turns out to be less than what our current number is, then we reset current to be one. And then finally, this is where the running maximum comes in. We have to update max, the max variable at each step. So in this case, we can just say max equals math.max of max and current. So this just pretty much assigns max to be whatever is larger, either max or current. And finally, all we have to do is return max. And we can submit this. And it's pending. So it's going to go through each test case, and hopefully everything passes. And there we go. As you can see, it passes all test cases. And that is how you solve the longest continuous increasing subsequence problem.